is a two-player game about frogs jumping across tadpoles. Here you go. In this game, the objective is to have the most victory points, and you are going to, on your turn, do one of four possible actions. You have a hand of cards, and you are going to, on your turn, either play a card from your hand to the shore in front of you, an area in front of you, max two cards on your shore. You can advance a frog, you can go from the shore to the first lily pad depicted here, in this case, it would go to this one, or to the next depicted one, this one will go from here to here, to there, to there, as shown at the top of the card. You can advance it one step, or you can do a scoring action, which is one of two things. Complete a frog's route, once this one has made it here, remove it from the board and score two victory points for it, or you can score a formation, score a card from your hand. If there are frogs in one, two, or three of these locations, on the table, you will score one, two, or three victory points with this card, respectively. If you move a frog and land on an opponent's frog, you're going to score their frog for one victory point. If you move a frog and land on one of these flies, you will move that fly to a different location without a frog, and you are going to take a new card, either face up or face down. The game is going to be over when all the cards are gone. In that case, you score everything you have gathered. Whoever has the highest score is the winner. Or if one of the two players is unable to take one of those four actions, then they lose and their opponent wins. If you ask me, like, putting the covers down and the, all the games that came in the set, which one I thought I would like the most, I would not have picked Bog. Right. But for me, this game is really good. It is a two-player abstract strategy game Yes. that feels so different from any other abstract strategy game I've ever played. You can see how your opponents are going to move, right? and you have to sit there and think, do I capture their, their frog at this point, or do I not capture their frog and get another one to play? Because this game, hand management is so oh important. Goodness, if you yeah. lose all your cards, you lose the game. Yeah, it's this weird hand management, I mean, crucial, I'm always drowning kind of hand management versus abstract placement and movement, a theme on an abstract game that makes sense. Yeah, with the flies and placement of those flies. This is so much that they put into this box, right, with these cards. And the frogs are different. Yeah. They have different grids. And then you can score the grids, which when yeah. you first play, I, first time I played, I was like, I'm going to get some points that way. Then I lost. You run out of cards if you do that too much, which is why the flies are so crucial. If you land on a fly... You will move that fly and draw a new card. That is like gold yes. in this game. Yeah, it's so clever. It is. It feels like nothing else. I think that's what it is at the end of the day. A lot of these other games is like, oh, a trick-taking game with a twist. Oh, a tile-laying a la Carcassonne game. Oh, a bluffing game with one of those, the fox eats the hens things. We've seen a lot of that. This one feels unlike anything else. Pre-programmed movement, but the timing matters, but the hand management, I'm giving it an 8. I think it's really smart. I'm giving it an 8.5. I really like this one. Not only is it like one of the best games in this series, this is yeah. one of the best abstract games for me. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's really something. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So that's Bob. Bob.